Hello everybody, welcome to tonight's uh, leg three, the blue spruce route. We're flying the C-47 from mainland North America across the North Atlantic to England. Well, essentially we'll end up in France and uh, going to try to have that done here in time for the D-Day celebration. It's the 75th anniversary of the D-Day landings and of course the C-47 was a big part of that. And so there is a, a group, actually I, I think there's several groups now that I have kind of been digging into it, but there's a, a particular group called the Dax over Normandy group that are going to be flying somewhere around 30 DC-3 slash C-47s along this uh, old World War II oceanic route, basically. And so uh, we are right about ready to depart on the third leg which will take us from Narsuswatch, Greenland to Reykjavik, Iceland. We have uh, we flew from Oxford, Connecticut up to Goose Bay, Canada on our first leg. We then departed Goose Bay to Narsuswatch last Saturday and that puts us right here at the end of runway 7. few scenery issues. If you watched last week's stream, you know kind of what we're dealing with here. There's just some things, some, some abnormalities. Um, still a pretty cool freeware scenery from Project Greenland. And uh, it was a fun approach. It'll be a very fun scenic departure. You're going to enjoy it. Pretty simple, but as you might imagine, quite a bit of just really really nice breathtaking scenery okay let's just uh, get our final checks here before takeoff we're gonna set our trim point two I can't do that manually so I'll automatically do that we're gonna put our landing lights on our uh, pedo heat we it's 57 degrees right now um, we'll talk a little about icing though here as we get going Fuel pumps can come on, we'll lock our tail wheel, and we're ready. So, brief the departure. It's a straight out uh, departure, climbing to 5,500 feet or so, and then we turn uh, slightly right to a 0, 09 or 0 heading. We need to climb to 9,500 to uh, make sure that we clear all terrain. And uh, if we're able to successfully do that, we should reach the coast of Greenland in about an hour. So here we go. Thanks for joining us. Flaps of the fourth. We're off. Went today 070 at 22, so quite the headwind right now. Uh, should make for a short takeoff roll. Might be a little bumpy on departure. Yeah, we're already airborne. Gear coming up. Bring the flaps up. Take a look at the sights and sounds. All right, 
Well done, Project Greenland. They have several uh, little chunks of scenery that they're carving out of this amazing landscape. And uh, this airport is one of them. I would say mostly compatible with P3D. Uh, not necessarily designed uh, to be a native product for P3D, but um, still a lot of fun to, uh, to fly into something that's non-default and uh, appreciate their efforts. So, all right, we are climbing out uh, almost to 2,000. We're going to follow this little valley here. As you can see, pretty high terrain all around us. So there's, uh, there's not a lot of options. We just climb out of here. Like I say, once we get to about 5,000 or so, then we can um, kind of kind of set our heading a little bit more to the east. We're pretty close to directly east right now. Um, we do have uh, Reykjavik set in our GPS. Of course, we had that discussion um, last uh, last leg about oceanic procedures in a slash alpha World War II era aircraft and um, shared shared my thoughts on that you can check it out uh, long story short uh, we don't necessarily have the ability to simulate a lot of the things that the original World War II pilots used to navigate and uh, so we're gonna we're gonna make use of modern avionics. The the folks that are flying um, the the C-47s here in uh, at the end of May into the beginning of June, they're gonna be using modern avionics. Um, there was one point that was made actually in a in another uh, video that I was researching that talks about that point that that makes a different point that I didn't think about, but uh, that is the. The regulations today are different than they were um, back in the, you know, the, the early to mid 40s. You know, the, FFA, the FAA has uh, has different things that are required now of aircraft that are going to be crossing, um, really flying from point A to point B, whether it's across land or or the ocean. So um, part of what, uh, you know, part of why they utilize modern avionics is is because of that as well so um, don't feel don't feel quite as guilty as I did when I initially was planning this and, and trying to be ultra authentic and you know really really true to the you know to the spirit of the times and uh, you know it's it's okay I, I think I've shared um, plenty of interesting resources along the way and I've learned a lot about um, you know Dead reckoning and celestial navigation, and using a sextant and drift, uh, you know, calculations and and all kinds of just really really cool things, um, and it's it's been a ton of fun. And I've tried to share those, whatever those ones that I, I feel like are the best. Um, I've tried to share those with you guys, and um, they're in the they're in the description. If you don't hear about them during the videos. I also know these videos can get quite long, and so I do try to trim them down and just just post the highlights. Uh, nobody wants to watch three hours of open ocean um, in a in a C-47 doing 140 knots. So uh, we try to we try to make sure we hit the highlights. You know, the departures obviously are are a big part of that, but uh, you know the the arrivals as well. And and so anyway. Let me be quiet for a little bit and again uh, let you peek outside as we head east to the coast of Greenland.
Very, very nicely done. Most of this just Orbix global base. When we get to Iceland, I do have the Iceland demo, which is uh, which is pretty stunning, as you might imagine. And uh, looking forward to that. The the airport of Reykjavik is uh, is default, but as you're going to see here a little bit later on, it's it looks really really awesome. Okay, uh, first challenge of the day. We are VFR, by the way, and hitting a little bit of a cloud layer. As you can see ahead of us, we do have some uh, some haze and some terrain, and that's not a great combination. We have some turbulence as well. Our airspeed's doing pretty good. We're climbing uh, you know, around 500 to 1,000 feet per minute. Still hand flying. Probably pop over to the autopilot here in just a little bit. Um, no particular IFR route available and so the one thing that I have tried to do uh, is, is fly using some VFR principles. That's that's sort of the universal theme as I talk to people that know more than me um, when it comes to this type of route is that it would have been um, essentially a VFR route. I mean they flew via landmarks and dead reckoning and they did use uh, the sun and they used the stars and, and you know they, they tried to keep track of where they were based on those things and as well as uh, you know using wind and weather information man that looks beautiful doesn't it out the front holy cow So one thing I tried to do as much as I could is keep VFR principles in mind. So we're going to try to stay, you know, maybe between this cloud layer as much as we can. We do need 9,000 or so feet in order to, to clear terrain uh, toward the eastern edge of, uh, of Greenland. So we are going to be ahead and turn this on because I'm going to want to start doing some things kind of outside here to give you guys a feel for uh, the beautiful, beautiful terrain, the beautiful scenery of Greenland. You know, who gets up here? I mean, I I never do. So that's that one of the side benefits of doing this project is I knew I was going to be flying to a couple of places that I don't normally uh, get to fly to. So, um, you know, regardless of anything else, that's going to be something that I remember from this trip through 8,000 about 1,500 to go we'll see what happens with this cloud layer and um, generally east is where we need to go it's almost a straight shot east to Reykjavik so that's kind of cool um, you know it's it's not the most thrilling you know it's not like we're shooting the canyon here and landing on sandbars and stuff like that. We're, we're pretty much just trying to kind of manage weather and, and, and the systems here. Um, so, all right, speaking of weather, I didn't turn the pitot heats on just yet because yeah, the conditions are still, um, you know, we're still, well, now we've dropped down a little bit here, so I think maybe I will. When we took off, they were we were almost uh, 50 degrees. Fahrenheit so there was no need for that we're now down to 26 degrees and with the clouds in the vicinity there is that possibility of moisture and icing and I actually didn't know how well icing was modeled on this C-47 this is the Manfred Jan Jan Visser hope I've said those guys names correctly the freeware C-47 fantastic aircraft um, I've had a lot of fun learning it, flying it, doing crazy things like this. Uh, but I didn't know how well the uh, the icing was was simulated. So 
on a practice run, <laughs> I did a practice run, oh, two or three days ago, I think, um, and just about 30 miles off the coast of Iceland, I started losing altitude, and I couldn't figure out why. It had nothing to do with the the power. I mean, I, of course, I checked, did I run out of fuel, what was going on, um, engines were running just fine, um, but I just I just started losing losing altitude, and then pretty soon I lost control of uh, pretty much all the air surfaces. And um, even though there wasn't anything visible on the outside, I'm almost positive that what what happened was uh, it, it was simulating ice buildup, you know, on the on the wings. And so um, so yeah, I'm a little I'm a little bit. Uh, more aware of that I guess now and especially up here with the weather that can can get cold and nasty really really quickly so um, anyway uh, that was just kind of a an interesting learning moment and I ended up putting it in the drink like I say about 20 miles outside of uh, Reykjavik which wasn't too fun after flying for five hours <laughs> to have a crash that late but um, it's okay. I don't mind. And um, the whole point of this journey, I guess, is is not about not about uh, me. It's about trying to honor those guys that that did this in real life back in the 40s, back in World War II. All those all those D-Day veterans and really all the war veterans. Um, just my way of paying tribute, I guess, to them and telling them thanks for all that they've done, all the sacrifices they've made. All right, we are at our cruising altitude, 9,500. Let's pull the power back a little bit here. About uh, 2,300 RPM and about 30 inches of manifold pressure should be should be pretty good. We are fighting a little bit of a headwind still. Winds uh, 071 at 18, so it's going to slow our progress slightly uh, burn a little extra fuel I do need to do some after takeoff things turn the fuel pumps off I'll turn the landing lights off not gonna put the de-icers on yet but I'll keep the pedo heats going just so we have uh, an accurate indication of how fast we're going and all that good stuff okay so what uh, what new resources do I have to share with you? Um, you know, you're probably going to want to check out a couple of these YouTube links, and uh, I will put them again in the description. Um, I found some really neat historical training films, and I put one of those on there for you. It, it uh, talks about you know the the actual. Um, process of uh, doing the nav work the the training that the pilots would go through so there's a there's a link that'll be included in there and then I also found um, a uh, like a precursor to uh, dead reckoning and and sextant navigation um, that uh, I thought was really cool and um, and then I also found a, a video about some of the very, very first uh, radar um, installations that, that helped with navigation and really were huge, huge um, advantages for the Allies and, and helped, uh, helped the Allied aircraft make it across uh, from... from England to uh, to wherever they were going and their targets that they were bombing inland um, and then make it back as well so very very simple mathematical ideas but they they were not really ever thought of uh, in terms of you know avionics and navigation and certainly um, weren't thought of in times of war but um, there were some smart guys that got together and and uh, you know put two and two together and said hey we can we can use this to help our guys out and it, it really was a, a big big deal it it helped the accuracy of uh, 
you know the bombing runs and of course they didn't have all the smart weapons that we have now um, but then uh, it, it increased the amount of planes that were able to make it back safely as well so it was a it was win-win deal and there's a video that does a much better job of of talking about that as well so again plenty of resources for you to check out if you're interested and uh, we'll talk about a few other things here in just a minute but I think it's time to get back outside and have a look around So this leg, uh, flight time, five and a half hours. It'll be uh, the second of two oceanic legs. We will also, next Saturday, um, head uh, across the North Atlantic. We'll be going from Reykjavik to Prestwick. And we'll be finally on English soil. And, but um, again, that'll be, uh, that'll be next Saturday. Normally, we do depart 0200 Zulu um, I apologize today we are a little ahead of schedule I had a conflict um, something else on the calendar tonight so I thought we would go ahead and just get things rolling a little bit early hopefully that uh, doesn't mess anybody up uh, but you know what most most of you are probably going to watch the recording of this as well um, would you know, we'd love to have some others if they want to join along and fly the route uh, it would be kind of fun to have you know 20 or 30 virtual C-47s flying on that last leg as well. Uh, but, uh, you know, um, so spread the word we do. We, we head out 0200 Zulu, and that will be the, uh, the time again next Saturday, um, hopefully. Then we will take a Saturday off. We're, uh, I've got some family commitments on the 18th, so we will be off. Um, but we'll be back on the 25th. We'll, we'll fly from Prestwick to Dutchford. And then uh, then we will uh, fly on Wednesday, June the 5th. We'll head from Dutchford to Ken Carpake and make that trip across the English Channel on the same day that the Dax Over Normandy crew makes their trip. So, um, you know, if you can only join one leg, that would be the leg to, to do it on, on June the 5th. You know, zero two hundred. Um, join us. It's it's a short leg, and I'm thinking about picking up. You know, there's an orbit sale going on right now, which is always a dangerous thing with me because, um, I mean, you can only have so many mortgages on your house. But uh, thinking about picking up the True Earth England because uh, that that leg. Um, well, the the leg from Prestwick to Dutchford uh, goes right past the White Cliffs of Dover and it's pretty scenic and so I think it'd be kind of fun to um, you know to have a little bit more photorealistic scenery and I, I don't think it does a fantastic job of capturing that particular area but the rest of the area is you know pretty pretty stunning and so that might be a part of you know an addition that we have here uh, later on most of what we've done in this flight has been freeware, 
from the uh, you know from the aircraft itself to uh, most of the airports you know, we've been able to find them available here and there for free we did uh, invest in a little bit of uh, scenery um, the uh, the um, airports that are in um, England we needed to those weren't available as freeware so we picked up uh, a couple of those just for fun but hey looky out there we're in the snow and so we need to be mindful and careful of temperatures now and and all that good stuff let's just take a peek over here looks like we're doing all right uh, temp wise yeah I think we're yeah the outside air temp is down quite a bit now below freezing so we need to be be mindful uh, everything else looks pretty good if we need to we'll turn the de-icer on I think we will turn the de-icer on just until we get through the moisture here and uh, yeah let's see what that looks like from an outside camera Yeah, a little bit, a uh, little bit snowy out. Our wind uh, still fighting us a little bit. Um, kind of off our left nose here, zero six seven, and uh, twenty one knots. We um, yeah, we've got. You can kind of see the edge of the storm up here. Probably another thirty or forty miles, and uh, should be through it then. Hopefully will be clear once we hit the ocean um, and then it's about a three three and a half hour leg across the ocean um, until we hit the coast of Iceland and so um, if we can keep the prop and the wings nice and ice free we should be you know um, should be over there approaching Reykjavik uh, what is it 2125 now yeah right around uh, 20 2600 2600 0200 Zulu um, which is uh, when we normally would start our flight and so you know um, we will see we will see so um, what else can I tell you here um, about uh, what's going on so uh, one thing that that I do think is is interesting about um, this particular aircraft and and um, the navigation equipment that we're using, as as you can see, we do have um, the ability to navigate uh, VORs. But one thing I didn't know until I embarked on this journey is that uh, those are not simulated outside of the United States. And so, you know, I'm sure it's a database thing, but um, uh, it was something that uh, I was not aware of. And so that's um, 
we knew that would be a little bit of a challenge in in Europe because they just don't have the same number of VORs as, as what we do um, in the United States. But I, I figured we would be good until at least we got by Goose Bay. And then I also thought we'd be good, you know, as we're going into places like uh, Narciss Watch and... and um, you know, just all the all the airports. They all have a, a frequency that you can tune into, but um, unfortunately, that is not the case. And so, uh, you will see on occasion Mr. GPS make his appearance, and that's uh, you know, that was a tough call that I had that I had to make, and what, whether I would use that or not. And I tried um, several several practice flights using the. Uh, the methods that you see on the videos that I've that I've shared, I think we're going to probably go ahead and activate this right now. Um, start heading that way. Uh, but um, I, what I found is that it's extremely difficult to navigate that way. And there's um, in the in the last leg, I shared a, a very very interesting um, downloadable bubble sextant that you can uh, actually incorporate right into this this cockpit um, and you know we messed around I say we I messed around with it a little bit didn't feel comfortable and there were some config files that a guy had to to change and that was a little bit over my coding <laughs> comfort level I guess um, but I did try some other things uh, from that I that I learned from a guy named AJ Crowley. He's got a wonderful YouTube channel, and um, you know I tried a few of those things on some shorter legs with some different aircraft, and uh, you know had varying levels of success, I guess, and just didn't feel quite like you know I didn't want to make this about necessarily the navigation only. You know I wanted to talk about some different things. Um, you know that was, that was more centered on the the guys that that actually did this um, back in the 40s, and so uh, you know I've, while I've we've talked a little bit here um, for the first now two and a half legs, um, the navigation issue I think is is pretty well um, going to be put to rest. Uh, we're going to have to make use of a combination of those old school methods, um, and but but probably more more than I'd like to we're gonna have to lean on the modern uh, nav aids like GPS and uh, and that's okay there's just I mean like I mentioned before there's a reason those guys went to school for three months of intensive training to learn how to navigate these things and uh, you know that's just something that most of us don't have don't have time to commit to so uh, and that's okay too um, so uh, a few of the other videos that I share with you are um, you know they're actually just you know stories of uh, the different uh, the different crews that went in and out of uh, in and out of Normandy and um, so I hope you enjoy those I also uh, stumbled across another group um, the Tabitha May team I guess uh, that, that are also going to be flying across and doing the D-Day uh, activities and uh, they you know they have a website that I'm going to share with you as well and and um, it's just neat to see some of these uh, you know some of these different groups and, and what the guys have done to you know restore essentially pieces of history and bring them back to uh, working condition so that they can fly all around uh, the world basically and allow people a chance to just experience you know what it what they look like what they sound like what they you know um, the, the, the noise of the engines and and you know I'm sure some of them uh, people are lucky enough to, to actually get in and, and do some flights that stuff's pretty awesome and that's just you know it's it's just more than you get at the typical museum and so um, got a lot of respect for those guys this crew here the the Tabitha make Clipper Tabitha um, that's a it's a it's a group worth checking out and uh, 
think that they're doing some some really really cool things um, so what you're gonna see here I guess in the uh, sort of the second half of this this series it's a six leg event and what you'll see after really after we get into uh, Reykjavik and then especially once we get across into England is many many more um, stories about different flight crews and uh, you know what they what they experienced um, their stories there's there's a, a bunch of them that are just unbelievable uh, we shared one last week and uh, you know about about the uh, the first wave that that went over and, and this plane happened to be in that first wave whiskey 7 Bravo and uh, you know, they talked a little bit about um, you know, it was bad enough going in. They went in at night, and they there was a lot of tracer fire, and uh, of course they were feeling they were feeling bad for the uh, the paratroopers that had to jump out um, because they had to figure out a way to you know survive all that flak and and all that enemy fire on the way down to the ground. But um, you know, something that you don't realize is that most of those planes. Um, they went back in again several times to drop supplies, you know, and of course the first time it was uh, at least a little bit of a surprise and it was dark so that helped but you know the second time and certainly the, the third time that they went in um, they the Germans knew um, that uh, that they were coming and it was you know that much more difficult to, and just to think about how much courage it took to to get back in that you know that aircraft knowing that you're um, you know these aren't <laughs> these aren't stealth by any means and they're not fast and they're you know they're they're pretty tough but um, you know a one shot in the right spot and you're you're coming down so uh, to be able to just do that again and again you know it, it just speaks to the the courage and the training um, the skill of all these guys and uh, so yeah I've got a bunch of a bunch of those videos uh, to share with you and you can watch those kind of in your own in your own time and uh, I think you'll enjoy those those stories and if you have some um, you know feel free link them in the comments uh, I'd be I'd love to, to check things out and uh, see if you've got some some stories that you know it seems like everybody um, knows somebody or has a relative that served in some capacity and has some really really interesting story that they can tell about you know whether it's personal or, or you know just a family member a friend or whatever that that's uh, you know you wouldn't believe it if if you weren't there type of story so um, that's those are the kinds of things I it'd be cool to kind of archive that I've got a I've got a little bit of a log that I'm keeping and I'm, I'm recording all that stuff and so anyway that can kind of be part of part of this uh, deal as well all right enough of me yapping we're back outside for a little bit
Well, you can see the weather once again deteriorating. And we should be, like I say, getting clear of that here in a little bit. It's going to kind of be an in and out thing. It doesn't really, um, really show looks like blue sky up ahead of us here so maybe we'll pop out for a little bit but we do have uh, we do have some precip here for the next uh, it's it's actually growing just a little bit um, so we will we'll keep a close eye on things again we're we're needing to monitor temperatures and and all that good stuff to make sure we don't want to have another icing incident at any time but especially we don't want something you know before we get off of the coast of Greenland everything looks pretty good so far we could uh, bump some carb heat up if we need it but right now those uh, those temps don't look too bad they're maybe getting a little bit on the cool side but not too bad had to we could yeah, let me just take a closer look here yeah they're maybe a little bit low let's see if we can just add a little bit of carb heat here um, see if that bumps our temps up just a little bit we'll give our we'll give it a minute to see if it has much of an effect. In the meantime, uh, closing in on the coast. From time to time, just a quick check, we're on course. Four and a half hours uh, into Reykjavik. If you want to plan ahead, um, come on back here close to 0200 Zulu. You should catch the approach and honestly it's, it's worth it. It's a neat airport. Pretty scenic, pretty unique. You know, the Iceland area is, uh, again, it's it's an area I don't fly a lot of, and so uh, it's cool to get up there and, and check it out. I, I think there's a, a fair amount of scenery um, that's available too, by the way. Sorry about that. Squeakiest, squeakiest chair on Batsim. That's kind of what I'm known for, but anyway, there's... Uh, a, a pretty good collection of scenery and, and it starts kind of with that Orbix um, you know that mesh which again is uh, you can download the demo um, absolutely free and check it out it's it's I think worth it um, doesn't seem to, to kill my frames at all um, and I don't have the beefiest computer in the world either so um, I don't want you to think that but um, you know, it, it handles things pretty well, and and like I say, there's a if you have the the mesh um, along with the uh, the small airports upgrade that is also free from Orbix, you, know, you can really you know you can enjoy some some different uh, some different airports uh, that that you know just they're just better than the default and and you know, just really pretty and fun to fly into so and, and and Reykjavik is is one of those I was it was a surprisingly good <laughs> airport and so uh, you know was happy to happy to see that along this route but uh, we'll probably lock her here onto uh, autopilot I think I'll I'll step away from the mic just a little bit we'll we'll bounce around from inside to outside just kind of keep monitoring instruments and uh, I will holler at you when we see the coast of Iceland and uh, I will also monitor the the chat if you swing by and want to say hi want to point something out uh, that's interesting hey I'm here let me know what you're thinking hope you're having a fantastic Saturday wherever you're at great weekend hope you're out somewhere in the virtual skies enjoying uh, enjoying your your night your morning wherever you are in the world 
and uh, just uh, enjoying this, uh, this amazing sim that we are so lucky to uh, to be able to to be a part of. I think we're getting close, folks. I have us about uh, 45 minutes or so from Reykjavik. We've been in the air now almost five hours. And the flight's been pretty good, really. Uh, we had a little bit of weather uh, coming off of the, uh, the Greenland departure there. But once we got through that initial kind of rain-snow mix, um, things uh, things cleared up. The wind has uh, not helped us much. Um, it's been the one constant that we've had to kind of monitor and adjust. And uh, magnetic deviation is another. Um, let's uh, let me kind of see if we can get out of this cloud layer first and then I'll tell you about the magnetic deviation issue that we're facing. Uh, looking at Active Sky by the way it's telling me uh, let's see we should have hmm, not really telling us scattered at 8500 so um, hopefully we'll just punch right through this this lone cloud here we are at 5,500. We've descended. At one time, we had to climb to um, 11,500. We just uh, we we had a, a weather system that was actually overcast down to below a thousand feet. And I just didn't quite feel comfortable getting down that close um, to the to the water. So we climbed up above it, and uh, then we've slowly been picking our way down through. Um, the clouds right up until now <laughs> we still do have a little bit of visibility down below us but um, yeah, we'll give this just another minute I'm looking at my um, my map here well now it's not looking so promising here's what I'm looking at this is all new build up So, uh, yeah, scattered it. 8,500 extends up to almost 17,000. So really, truly, you know, um, shouldn't be as overcast as it is right now. But it is, so let's make an adjustment. Let's, uh, let's drop it down 1,000 feet. I'd like to welcome you if you've hung out with this or if you're just joining us we've got a pilot in the air by the initials ST he must be making a long haul himself because he said I'm tuning in to watch your flight while I'm making my flight and it's kind of funny I do that quite often <laughs> tune into somebody else's twitch stream or something like that hey there we go we're breaking through here so I think we're gonna be in business alright so while we're descending down through this cloud layer let me show you what magnetic deviation fun we're having let me adjust here because we're falling a little bit north of course so our heading is 160 we're attempting to intercept a basically a 0 9 or 0 heading uh, by flying 160 that's what that's showing. Meanwhile, I have one compass that's showing me that uh, 160 here kind of agrees with that, but this compass over here is showing me 110. So, in looking at the charts to Reykjavik, and and I'm no chart expert here, without a doubt, I am probably the worst. But um, let me show you kind of what they're what this is saying. I'm seeing a, 
is that a deviation of 14 degrees and is that a is that a lot I, i'm thinking that's a lot it seems like and i haven't i haven't flown up here very very often so i don't know if that's a lot or if that's even what that means but it just seems like um you know it's, it seems like the direction that your nose is facing in the aircraft is not always agreeing with what your compass is telling you so um you know it's it's interesting but you know i think we're we're on the right track i think we're going to get there um we'll air to a little bit north of of course because that way we at least are going to run into iceland and <laughs> so that's a good thing um but we should be coming in here to uh you know a nice little peninsula area that has um two airports actually uh, i don't know if i can say this first one Kavlik, Kavlik, Bravo India, Kilo Foxtrot, and then of course Reykjavik, uh, Bravo India, Romeo, Kilo. We're going to level off here 4,500. We already have. Uh, might as well at this point in time. I haven't done an altitude or altimeter adjustment here in a while. 3041. Yeah, that's going to make quite a difference. Three zero four one. Yeah, I'm clear up here over five thousand. Nope, oh, apologize for that. Um, I'm not logged into something, and Microsoft doesn't like that. Don't know how to turn that off. It happens every now and again but that's okay, it's just kind of the deal. Uh, we have also had two little internet blips which have disconnected me from VATSIM and stopped my OBS, but fortunately everything has um, reconnected and uh, it doesn't look like the stream, it maybe has a little bit of a hesitation, a little pause in there, but uh, looks like it's it's continued okay all right just to check in from st he uh, I'm assuming it's a he might be a she uh, doing military logistics fly in um, in or flights in an Osprey that's cool that's definitely a bird I'd like to spend some time in uh, did a short hop from Cherry Point North Carolina to Shaw Air Force Base awesome awesome um, big fan of, of military aircraft um, and that's one I think would be that would be a, a lot of fun to mess around with. So I need to <laughs> have a lot of things that I would love to love to horse around with. Just not enough hours in the day. Um, fortunately, I've got a wife that is uh, very understanding. Lets me have my hobby time. In fact, she encourages me. She really likes it when I leave her alone. So you know. 30 years of marriage does that to you. Our joke, of course, is uh, been married 30 years, but it seems longer. No, I'm lucky. Lucky guy. And, in fact, that's partly why I moved the uh, live stream up today is because um, I'm going to help her out. We've got some uh, projects going around the house, and so uh, I'm going to help her get a few of those things done. And... Uh, be a good way to kind of close the weekend out leg three by the way if you don't know what's going on here if you just stumbled upon this and are wondering what the heck is this guy doing um, in a c-130 over the north atlantic well here's the deal still don't see any land just yet just more clouds um, we are attempting to replicate something that's called the blue spruce route this is a route that took World War II era aircraft um, from uh, North America, mainland North America, to uh, to Europe, and it's uh, you know it's it's still in use today. It's not it's not um, it's not as prominently used as it used to be because a lot of aircraft now can fly just direct uh, from point A to point B. But it used to be that you had to make a couple of stops for fuel or uh, maintenance checks, things like that. 
And so our route uh, is uh, Goose Bay. Well, we started in Oxford, Connecticut, then we went to Goose Bay, Canada. Um, we did that on the 20th, which was a Saturday. Then the next Saturday, the 27th of April, sorry, I should have been more specific. We went from Goose Bay, Canada to Norse's Watch, Greenland. That's where we hung out um, last, uh, last weekend. And then uh, today, of course, May 4th, um, we are heading from uh, Narsiswatch into Reykjavik. And so um, that's where we will end up here, pending any disasters, which I, I reverse jinxed myself already because I did say that um, I, I had a practice flight where I got pretty much about where I am right now and uh, iced up and crashed. Um, five hours worth of uh, practice and I went down into the ocean just short of Iceland so um, we're, we've been paying close attention to that today and um, we've kept the, the anti-icing on as we've been flying through precip and um, our, our temperatures have definitely been cold enough and I think there's been enough um, precip in the air that icing conditions can exist and I I can tell you that um, they are simulated in this uh, this freeware C-47 from Manfred Jan. Great plane, a lot of fun. Uh, I have really really enjoyed it. So um, that's where we'll end up today. Next Saturday, um, we're back to our normal time. We uh, we depart, or the the planned departure has been up until today 0200 Zulu and um, we're going to be flying from Iceland here Reykjavik into Prestwick England and uh, that will be actually the longest oceanic leg that's almost six full hours so it's a little bit probably 20 more minutes longer than this one here and so uh, you know we're going to have to uh, buckle up again and, and pay attention to what's going on and you know, put on a put on a few uh, TV shows to keep you occupied as well. Uh, I don't know what you guys do on long haul flights. I'm not really a long haul guy, but um, happy to do it in this case. And and uh, I've just been watching a little playoff hockey. Um, been watching a little bit of baseball. I even caught a little bit of the Kentucky Derby. And so it's been kind of a sports weekend for me and a lot of entertaining stuff going on so all right well back to business so we have switched from our main fuel tanks to our auxiliary fuel tanks we do have uh, plenty of fuel we still have a little bit of fuel even in our mains if we need it which we shouldn't but um, still you know 160 out of 200 gallons in the auxiliary so you know we, we should be good there. Our, our temps, pressures all look good. And uh, yeah, I think we're in pretty good shape here heading into Iceland. Looks like our biggest concern is going to be visibility. But, uh, you know, we're still, uh, we've still got a little bit of wiggle room. We're still 4,500. We could drop down a little bit more if we needed to. Um, getting active skies really not indicating that we need to they're saying uh, most everything should be up above us you know 8,500 and I still don't have you know any any information that uh, contradicts that so we're just gonna stay with it here and uh, follow our instrument in again this is not a VOR that we're chasing this is actually a GPS waypoint um, if you followed any of my earlier streams on this particular route, you know that uh, the VORs don't work, or at least I haven't found that they are simulated outside of the United States in this particular aircraft. So um, we have had to rely on a little bit more modern aviation to get us across the pond. And that's okay. Um, all of the aircraft that are gonna be making this trip in real life, they're all uh, equipped with modern aviation. Most of them have uh, 
you know, even had engine upgrades and and uh, they're they're like brand new. So and brand new, including the avionics um, and all those things. Uh, and then, if nothing else, you know as well as I do that each one of them has their iPad with four flight on it that's helping them out as well. So um, I've reached out to a couple different pilots that are going to actually be flying um, this event in real life, and I've heard back from a few. They've, they're really nice guys, and they're excited. Um, I've asked them a little bit about the flight planning and the routing and things like that, and they, they've they been pretty tight-lipped about that, which I understand. There's a lot of reasons why um, that they, they need to be tight-lipped, and my questions um, haven't necessarily been, you know, hey, exactly where are you flying and when and all that good stuff. Um, I'm just curious to to get their take on, like, what would what would the World War II era pilots, what would their flight plan look like in a situation like this? You know, who would they who would they be filing to, and what would it look like? And you know, um, I just I'm interested in the historical side of of these types of flights um, as well as as you know the the obviously the military significance um, that uh, that we're trying to you know pay our respects to all of our military folks but I haven't heard back anything yet I'm still gonna there's there's a few guys I'm waiting on yet that uh, maybe can um, you know uh, enlighten me a little bit it's been fun to research and I've chased down a lot of leads and while I haven't really found the answer as far as flight planning specifically goes um, I have found a lot of interesting things um, in terms of navigation that I think is has been really cool and I've practiced a few of the old school navigations you know the the dead reckoning and and um, using sextants and things like that there's there's a pretty cool actually a sextant tool that will uh, actually you can integrate it right into the C-47 here. Um, I haven't. It's a little bit above my skill level as far as messing around with uh, you know configs and things like that. I got yeah. I'm I'm a little bit leery of doing that, but uh, but I've seen some videos and it it it's one of the old school navigation techniques that actually um, is simulated pretty well in P3D. So, uh, you know, it's, I do intend to continue to practice that. Um, I've done a few flights using that sextant approach, and, uh, well, um, let's just say you wouldn't want me doing it across the open ocean, because <laughs> I, I didn't exactly get where I was hoping to go. But, you know what, that's okay, that's part of the deal. Those guys spent three months, right, uh, figuring out how to use that stuff. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, take a breath, take a look at some charts and things and kind of get uh, my ducks in a row for our imminent approach into Iceland. I'm going to let you guys hop outside and take a look around. So the good news is, Reykjavik Adis shows uh, surface winds 
360 at 4, temperature 41, and no clouds, clear conditions. So, uh, whatever this mess is right now out in front of us should not be a problem long term. And indeed, it looks like maybe we're breaking out. Sounds like our friend ST is is perhaps a, a military guy or gal themselves, and um, uh, if you're a current active active military member or or a veteran, thank you so much uh, for everything you do or have done for our country. Um, I I don't have the words to tell you how much that means to me. And uh, I hope there's, even in a small way, that that this is this pays tribute to to uh, you and and everybody else that served. Um, obviously, it's it's kind of the theme is around the D-Day vets, but uh, you know what the it's it's all it's all intended to to be um, a way for for me to say thanks. So um, glad you stopped by, St. and um, yeah, check out the, the route. Um, there's there's going to be some information in this description, or you can just jump back into future uh, Blue Spruce route videos, and you can see there's a dday.org, uh, I think Dakota over Normandy.com. There's a couple of links. I can't remember exactly what all of them are, but there's some pretty good info, and they're great guys. I mean, they're I like what they've done, and they've pretty much committed. Uh, their lives uh, voluntarily to restoring these pieces of history and then uh, taking them all around the world basically and sharing them with folks and it's a that's an awesome thing in my in my book um, and it's it's great to see you know not just the flight sim community kind of rally around them but uh, it's uh, you know it's great to see people from all walks of life um, you know step up and, and help out and, and just appreciate you know what uh, what our US uh, military has done yeah so ST just an old marine grunt <laughs> well not too old well hey thanks like I say I um, that's awesome that's awesome so tell your friends man this is this is what we're doing on Saturday nights and and uh, for the next couple Saturdays anyway and uh, yeah if you happen to pick Pick this freeware bird up. Uh, join us in in Iceland uh, next Saturday, or uh, on the 5th of June, we'll be flying from Dutchford across to Cane Cane Carpeque, and, and kind of celebrating that that 75th anniversary of D-Day, uh, which is the same day that the uh, the pilots in real life are going to be doing their flight across uh, the channel. So should be cool, and would be awesome to have a few a few people. Um, tagging along in in virtual virtual C-47s also. All right, well we keep looking. I promise you, Iceland's out there. Um, those clouds are kind of like mirages, man. I keep thinking they're chunks of ice floating or pieces of land or something, but it's just it's super hazy right now. And it's just tough to tell if there's really anything going on. But yeah, we're we're getting close. Um, check what mr. GPS has to say uh, yeah we're within 20 20 minutes of, of being there and you can see on the on the radar oh yeah we're right we're right there right there guys we may just make it yet temps have been good I ended up turning the car beat off I didn't really notice a whole lot of difference there in the uh, carb air temp, the cylinder temp, um, but it was killing me a little bit on some power issues, so I went ahead and turned it off for a little bit, and uh, she's flown, she's flown very well since. Our temperature's outside, by the way, still just down there hovering right below that freezing mark, so, um, and we're going to keep all the anti-icing stuff on. ST says, He's flying through the black soup right now in South Carolina. <laughs> now there's some 
There's some so there's some storms. I tell you what, it's. Um, I think there's a, an event going on in Miami right now, and there's some pretty nasty weather down there. And um, yeah, there's some. It's springtime, man. It's wicked. It's it's fun in a simulator, but uh, you wouldn't want to have a ticket on one of those real real planes. That'd be a little bit a little bit tough. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe you thrill seekers like that stuff. Um, I kind of like it nice and smooth. <laughs> but uh, hey, to each their own. Let's hop back outside, take a peek, see what's going on. This ought to give us the the best view here coming in and uh, while we wait for things to come into uh, view off the horizon let's take a look just real quick don't really have an approach that we're going to use we're just going to be expecting runway one uh, this uh, north runway it's you know 5141 feet long plenty long and uh, elevation pretty close to sea level 21 feet so you know here uh, as soon as we start getting a little bit closer we'll have to descend we're still 4,000 feet so we'd like to get ourselves down a little bit closer um, there I, I looked at uh, there uh, there are some noise abatement issues here and we need to stay above 500 feet um, as we uh, approach this there's a peninsula that we're coming up on I think we can finally see it yeah there we go all right land hill so we're gonna be well above 500 feet there um, they uh, they don't want you dropping below the uh, <laughs> the glide slope obviously there's a bunch of restrictions as far as you know you can't uh, no run-up procedure at, at certain points in, in the day, you know, after 8 o'clock or something. Um, they, they really want you to limit the, uh, you know, any reversers or anything like that. So there's there's some pretty strict noise abatement rules here, and we'll probably break every single one of them just accidentally, but we won't mean to. <laughs> so this is our first non-practice um, flight into Reykjavik and uh, yeah excited uh, airport elevation 45 45 feet okay we'll keep that in mind so um, the the idea here I think is we will uh, we will probably just try to make sight of our of our airport first and um, and then we will uh, decide if we're going to just cross midfield and enter a, enter a right-hand traffic pattern or if we catch sight of it early enough we will um, just enter a left downwind and, and come in like that. Um, we, we do have actually a localizer a 
approach into runway 13 if we wanted it. Um, as I'm looking at the charts, actually runway 1 is not really one that's used very often. And our, our surface winds now are calm. So I we may change our mind here. We may just try to make straight in runway 13. No, there is a there is an RNAV for runway one, so I think we'll stick with our our original approach. That's kind of what we've been planning for and preparing for, and that uh, again that gives us a chance to you know kind of get our bearings, get a lay of the land. Um, I don't think uh, that that elevation is is going to be an issue. Um, I think we're going to be fine as far as that goes, but it, it's good always, I think, when you're coming into a, a new airport to, you know, just take a little swing, a little tour around the block, and, uh, yeah, just see, just see what there is to see as far as, you know, terrain and, and things like that. Should just be right past this. Uh, yeah, there's the other, the other airfield. It looks like. Trying to remember what that one was again. That's uh, Kaflovic. Kaflovic. I'm not sure how you say that. Reykjavik. Reykjavik. Forgive me if you are from Iceland and uh, I am mispronouncing your city's name. I don't mean any disrespect. I just, uh, just don't spend much time up here. I need to. Um, Greenland was cool. I mean, I, I would love to look more into that project Greenland, get a few more sceneries, fly around, um, check it out. I mean, it's just nothing but mountains and fjords and just awesome. I mean, that's as cool as it gets in my book. But, uh, yeah, if you don't have a reason, you just don't go. And so that's, that's part of, like I say, a side benefit of this particular project is it's helped me fly to a few spots that I normally would not. Keflavik. Keflavik, ST is saying. Keflavik, Keflavik. Reykjav oh boy, now he's Reykjavik. Reykjavik. Keflavik, Reykjavik. Okay. I, I tried to put it into the computer to say how to pronounce it, and of course all you get is the computer voice, and you, <laughs> it doesn't help you any. In fact, it makes it worse. But uh, here's what it means. It means I need some more friends from Iceland. I mean, that's the bottom line. I need to go there. I need to meet some guys, meet some gals hang out wouldn't that be a good 30th 
anniversary present me and my wife to take a cruise to Iceland? I think so. I think that would be awesome. Yeah, okay. Well, we may need to keep our eyes peeled here. We, uh, we're not bad as far as our heading. Um, but we're not there yet. do see some houses and stuff over there so I think we're getting closer we're passing 2,000 feet there is a little bit of a terrain issue so um, you know what it's like I say always good to just kind of take a look see and um, get a feel for for what's happening. I do think we're going to just fly directly midfield over the airport. We'll enter uh, uh, right downwind and uh, make right traffic for runway 01 into Reykjavik. Yep, you can definitely see a little bit of a community over there. And I also promised you, this is the default airport, but it's one that I believe has been upgraded a little bit with Orbix's uh, freeware, the, the small airport upgrader. I don't know exactly what it's called, but or remember exactly, but... Um, it's uh, it it just kind of adds a little extra, you know. It adds some some static aircraft and some um, you know trucks and stuff that drive around and people that walk around and things like that. The thing that I thought also made this airport. Yep, I see some poppy lights. Awesome. Okay. Um, the thing that makes this airport also a little bit. Uh, extra special is this Iceland is actually it's a freeware well not a freeware it's a it's a demo mesh that Orbix provides uh, for you to check out so I I've had this downloaded for like a year and again just have never flown out here to uh, see what it's like but if the Reykjavik airport is any indication of you know what it's like then I think uh, I think we're going to spend some more time up here. Okay, autopilot is coming off, and we're going to just get this bird heading where it needs to head. I see the airport. It looks like we should have no difficulty uh, making a right-hand traffic pattern. Looks like we've got like some huge shipping port out here. This hasn't loaded in just yet. Yeah, my my scenery generator, I don't have it set to, to load in super high detail a long, long way away. I've got this old computer that uh, it, it's kind of like that old that old pickup. It's I've got it tuned up that's running pretty good with what it has on it. But uh, you can't <laughs> 
can't push it too hard. Can't do too much. Up oh, there's my co-pilot dog upstairs. Telling me I should be checking my descent checklist here. So let's take a look here. Oh, wait a minute. Before landing checklist. Okay, I will not quite at that point yet, but I need to go propellers to high RPM. I've uh I'm gonna turn my fuel pumps on right now. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the landing lights on right now so I don't have to worry about those. Uh, I'm not gonna worry quite yet about the uh, flaps and the landing gear. I'll wait till I'm on final. Before landing checklist, not quite complete. But uh, yeah, I mean, check it out. That's a that's a good looking default airport and and again not all the not all the detail has come in yet but it's that's pretty cool it, it's way better than your typical you know rectangle with a black runway through it it's got some you know some airport activity down there and that's where we're gonna try to end up I believe is right there at those those hangars but it's got a bunch of stuff I mean it's solid okay so we're midfield at 1500 we are clear to the right we're gonna be heading right downwind and we can go ahead and start pulling the speed back a little bit get in flaps range we'll start descending just a little bit I am not good when it comes to flying patterns I will admit that so if you're a real pilot and you're watching this uh, this is going to be some cringeworthy stuff part that's tricky about this is I don't know what compass to believe. We're gonna we're gonna go with the one in the bottom center and just kind of see how close it gets us. Alright. We should be on the downwind leg. Probably won't be able to see my airport. No. We're gonna add a notch of flaps here our speed down to about 120 try to get our altitude at about a thousand I have a history of missing high on every single approach um, this this bird fly, uh, floats on me I'm I'm gaining altitude why am I gaining altitude that's not good that's the opposite of what I want so I'm a thousand feet too high right now. Little things like that. That's what that's what gets me. So we're gonna we're gonna take an extended downwind here and try to get our altitude situation figured out. Weather data we're still calm on the ground, still clear. Beautiful. Look look at that. That is awesome awesome Okay, well, we're still super high, but we're getting a long way away from our airfield, so we're going to make our base turn, continue our descents. 
not try to get too crazy with it. Hopefully we can keep it somewhere around 700 feet per minute. Maybe just I'm gonna just keep it coming around here because I think that um, I turned downwind a little too quick. So we're gonna come around and see if we can't pick up the the field. And I also have just realized that I have lined up for the wrong runway. I am actually not coming in on runway one. What runway am I coming in on? Holy cow. Now I'm too low. Well, at least I'm not too high. not sure. I'm looking at the chart. Uh, I am not sure what runway I'm coming in. Am I even in Iceland right now? We're not going to worry about that. We're going to just see if we can get it on the ground. We've managed to keep the water below us and the sky above us. All right. Gear coming down. Flaps one half. Power coming back, and again, I'm too high. Glad to know that some traditions never die. Bringing the power back, descending steeply. All the VIPs in the back are going, what have I got myself into? I have had to do a go around. I managed to land successfully in Goose Bay on the first try, but I had to do a go around in Iceland because I was too high. Okay, we're back on the glide slope now. We're going to find out which, <laughs> which runway we're approaching. Textbook. This is textbook. You're probably taking notes right now and uh, saying, yeah, that's how you do it. That's what it says in the C 47 manual. All right, flaps three-quarter. Speed's getting a hair low. Runway one, one. No. Runway zero, one. Boy, my compass is hard. Yeah. Okay. We'll talk about that when we get on the ground. I was right all along. All right, cutting the power. See how many bounces. All right, not even one. Tail coming down. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Reykjavik. Tailwheel, so we can actually make a turn here. And we're there. Beautiful Reykjavik, Iceland.
we're going to pull in right next to this guy here because we need fuel. Five and a half hour flight, but we've managed to find Iceland, we've managed to find Reykjavik, and even though our instruments were playing tricks on us, our tired, tired eyes, we actually managed to find the correct runway. So very happy about that, not a half bad landing. Appreciate anybody and everybody who uh, stopped in tonight. It was a fun flight. Um, we'll do it again next Saturday. Again, this is a, an ongoing project. We have three more weeks, three more Saturdays. We normally head out uh, 0200 Zulu. This week we were a little bit early, as we talked about, but. Uh, back on schedule next week. Alright, let's turn those noisy old fuel pumps off. Let's take one last look around. And yeah, hope everybody has a great Saturday. Again, thanks for stopping by. This is the Blue Spruce Route. We'll see you next Saturday. Take care. God bless.